Oh God. Welcome back to the Charles Hogan oh, experience. We have two cameras today. Let's see how this two goes. Two cameras today. Let's see. Let's see. We're moving up. Very luck. We, uh, What's going on? How have you been? Yeah, nothing much. Good week. Yeah. What did I do this week? Normal shit. I actually can't handle this. Yet. This is a bit. What this cup? Yeah. Can I have it? It says yeah. You can do something. Here. here we go. All right. Cool. So. Was yeah. How's the week been? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Good so far. Went to Grapple Fest yesterday in Liverpool. That was good fun. Yeah. Watched uh, Max and Silver you compete. Uh, yeah, they both had close matches. One, Max had Matty Holmes and Silvio had Jacob Couch. Yeah. And yeah, I think Silvio and Jacob Couch's match was pretty pretty much a stalemate the whole time. Mm. Max's and Matty's. Like Matty got a takedown, Max got a takedown. It's potentially more depending on how you see it, but it was a lot of being pushed off the mat and that sort of stuff. So there was no like long periods of play yeah, where you yeah. could say that one person is definitely smoking the other. I mean. I would say I'm biased, so I would say that Max should have won, and I'd okay. say that Silvio. To be won. fair, the Silvio and Jacob match should have just been a draw, because literally, like, if you, no, would, no, I'd no. be Jeff counting it. Nothing would have. There'll be no points, no like, no attempts. Basically, just yeah. Stalemate. Stalemate. But Damn. the rest of the Graphic Fest card was exciting, I'm sure. Yeah, Mark yeah. McQueen. Shout out to Mark McQueen. Mark McQueen, fucking hell, what a man. So, <laughs> <laughs> One eighty for nine on the bench. He was telling us so. Yeah. Man, yeah, I'm looking forward really, to getting him on. Not even juicy, yeah. He beat my 170, fair yeah. play. He beat my 170. <laughs> he beat my 170 for five. He had a good match though, good takedowns yeah, I saw. fucking hell. He, he, I mean, the other guy, I don't know what juicy was on, but he seemed... Juiced fuck, as fuck. I mean, yeah, he was juiced as fuck because he was like big and, you know, jumping around and sure. shit, but Mark handled him. Yeah. Mark handled him. He, he took him down. He landed with full body weight, like, through his shoulder into the guy's... Nice ribs body fucked him <laughs> yeah, up yeah fucked him up yeah like it was all amicable the guy had some good gramby rolls like good feet for a big lad but yeah but mark crushed him nice bro that'll be good him. getting him on the pod yeah yeah christmas he's time coming, he's coming, coming in christmas. Get, get some good training with Santa. him <laughs> <laughs> <It's gonna fuck laughs> us up instead. <laughs> so we did a uh, we did some uh, filming on uh, techniques today oh, i think yeah, we, technique yeah, yeah. Fans have been asking, we're delivering. Yeah. I think uh, one technique a week. Yeah. We could either go add on or tech move of the week. You yeah, know, yeah. five minute clips. Yeah, it's, just it's a free. little bit extra. It's free for now. Free, free for now free for the now. fans. <laughs> Ways to improve your yeah. technique. Yeah. All the yeah. subpar ones go for free. Yeah, exactly. Right. All right. We've got a lot of questions, so yeah, let's just, let's go. Let's just crack on with the questions. Let's start with the first one. <laughs> let's crack on. Bro. How so chill, bro? All right. How <laughs> so chill. Let's give a bit of context to that. I mean, you're a chilled guy, but when you're doing jets, you're always very like, very calm, smirking yeah. at people, very chilled out, happy to play guard, yeah, the key. The bottom. What's you, the already, you already mentioned the uh, key, I guess, smoking people. Smoking people. <laughs> That's a key smoking. No, I said smirk, key. smirk, smirking. smirk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, smirking it's, at uh, people. Oh. Smirking at people. It's a Freudian slip. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, enjoy myself. I try, to be fair, I'm, I'm chill until I get injured, then I'm a bit less chill. Do you stop putting it on? A bit more worried, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get injured, so I don't want to get hurt. It's just a, it's just a job, anyway. Yeah, but that's <laughs> your style. You're very like, yeah. you just prefer to play, like, yeah, just play try and get it as close to the gym as possible. And I'm never like, in the gym, I'm not that guy who's like, poor high and all this, so just try and have a normal role in the gym. I feel like the less actual aggression there is, the more you can do jiu-jitsu and like try and catch people out and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't like matches where people just doing random aggressive shit just for the sake of like mental domination because it like That's it doesn't work. work if you like if you want to actually mentally scar someone you've got to start like beating the shit out of them or try and break their their bones so <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna try my way yeah, <laughs> they can, they can snap on the back of my head yeah yeah <laughs> see which one hurts more <laughs> gordon made, made a good point actually to his fucking thing he put obviously he put that uh, thing up on Instagram where he made like half a mil in a month from BJJ yeah. Fanatics, but he's like, my instructionals will work with the least amount of physicality as possible. Yeah. Like I designed these so I don't need to use my physical attributes yeah. to do jiu-jitsu. He makes more than half a mil. Regardless, let's go back to the physical attributes. <laughs> <laughs> Point, like you don't need to try and be fucking very, like so physically imposing to people. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And especially in the start of the match, like what's yeah. the point of ragging someone's head in the start of the match? Like. They're not going to be tired within three minutes of you ragging their head, so you may as well you may as well just wait a bit and feel them out. Conserve your energy too. Yeah, conserve your energy. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I don't know, all the angry shit and the jumping around. Maybe it's necessary if you if depending on your style. But also, I'm playing guard, right? I'm like, 
You can't be I'm too aggressive. On my ass. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't be realistic with yourself. Aggressively you know? bad. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not fighting <laughs> anyone. Get it, get it. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, you're not fighting anyone. You're just you're playing a game. It's so just, It's Monopoly essentially. Just, <laughs> just it's, it's a game basically. So you don't want to be aggressive. That's uh, I mean, you, yeah. If you if you're sat on your ass, I feel like it's you can be intense. You can push the pace, but yeah. the like angry faces and stuff don't tend to help. Yeah, but yeah, you're not concentrating if you're angry. Mm. You're not you when you're angry. You're too emotional. No, yeah. you're, you're not you. You're not you when You've you're changed, hungry. man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Inconsiderate. So how so chill, bro? That's it. That's it. CBD. All right. Signs your club is a cult. Go on, give me your input. Uh, yeah. That you're not allowed to train at other clubs. Why haven't we done this one before? We have. Yeah, you're not allowed to train at other clubs. That's the main one that we settled on, is that if, you're, if your coach doesn't want you training elsewhere, it's probably that they're self-conscious about their moves. Like, no one's moves are actually secret anymore, so for That's you over. to be like, yeah, for you to be like, oh, don't show the other teams the moves, like, yeah. it's like... If they get weird about you training, yeah, like, if they get weird about you training out of the club, oh, what, yeah. what are you training here for? Why you yeah, yeah. Train? It's like, no, I'm just... Let me, yeah, let me yeah, go, yeah. man. That was it. Unless it's your dad, you just train with your dad. <laughs> That's what we settled on, isn't it? Unless it's your actual biological papa. Or if they make just... you get a tattoo of that club. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that yeah. one hits that close one to hits. home. <laughs> I wonder if young Owen watches this. You know, no, young Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to cut that. <laughs> we don't have to cut that. No, That's we don't fine. have to cut that. So yeah, no, Science no. Club is a cult. <laughs> if you've got to ask, it's probably, you know, probably move club. Yeah, I've got to ask. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, especially like, I don't. Are there many culty places? We don't have to name anyone, but are there any culty places in London? Do you think at yeah. the moment? Yeah. 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 <laughs> are there any that are not culty? Yeah. That's true. Actually, I'm thinking. Like, just, just move around. If you want to move around, do more open mat. Yeah. It's fine. You're a big yeah. fan of open mat. I like I like going to different gyms. Yeah, because you can only you know you got to be good at every style. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Give us a bit of rationale behind this. Oh, I've covered it before so yeah, what, for the no viewers. What the Wizard of Osbeck was saying, Christian Osbeck. Shut up. What Christian. a champion. He used to play for Valencia, but now he's uh, moved on. Anyway, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that there's different intensities at different. That was a good point. There's different intensities at different gyms, and like people tend to match each other's intensity in the gym. Like you'll always get that one guy who's like fucking goes hard every round. But in general, if you go to one gym, they're super technical. You go to one gym, they're more like physical. You get prepared for whoever you may face in competition. Because competition, I feel like the main thing is like you don't know the, what they're doing or their pacing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you get used to dealing with it and learning other people's game quickly, then you basically improve your own game. A way, better in a way. Exposing yourself to a wider variety of start. Yeah, yeah, of exactly, styles, yeah. people, lengths, angles, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like if you think most, that every school will have like one or two coaches, they'll basically teach what they like for the most part, and then yeah. so there'll be a huge selection of moves that you just never encounter if you only train at one gym. Got it. Yeah, and I've noticed that that's a big deal. Like even if you if you train just in one country, like if you think it would all stem from like a couple of guys who came here and started teaching. Sure, sure. Now that the videos are there, it's changed, but yeah. Yeah, if you just like if you go to other countries, you'll see a whole different style of, for example, of training or like a whole different feel. So yeah, more variety, better. Nice. So, Spice of life. Cool. Spice it up. Train at different gyms. Do more yeah. open mats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. <laughs> how to progress if how to progress with not many opportunities to drill? That's a good question. So that yeah, I didn't really understand the question to be fair because they can't. As in, you can't. You can spar, but you can't. Let's say someone's got like someone's quite time poor. They can only fit in like three to four sessions per week, and they can just do like that specific hour. They don't have time to drill outside of that. They have they have time to either just go to class or catch up with a friend and just fucking train hard. Yeah. What we? So probably about making your hours as useful. I mean, maximizing what you get out of your hours. That's going to depend on your coach or how switched on you are outside of time. You can actually physically train. So if you do like lots of watching of videos and shit like that. Then you go to train, you work specifically on the stuff that you feel you've worked out is what you need to improve, Got then it. that's the best way, so, yeah. To find, like, be more in tune with your specific yeah. journey. Or I, way, think it's, way I think out. it's pretty hard to train yourself, especially when you're starting out. Yeah, yeah. You don't have you... guidance or shit to copy or people to make you feel the moves. So yeah, if you're time poor, you better do some extra work outside of jujitsu or have a really good coach 
And yeah, make sure you're not fucking around when you get there and you're not taking restaurants or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Restaurants. It's like, do, do the, also, like we said last time, this is a key detail, do the mental work. A lot of people are prepared to do the physical work, but they're not prepared yeah. to do the mental work. Get on the instructionals. Get on the instructionals, yeah. watch YouTube, watch people, people's matches. Yeah, and make sure it's good instructionals. Actually, we can tie this into another question, two for one. Best That's instructional right. I've watched. We go through this every single week, almost. But I thought so, yeah. So I, just, I like to watch Gordon and sometimes John's stuff. I like to, basically all the old Danaher guys, I like to watch them. And then I like to watch Lachlan, Craig, and I like to watch matches as much as possible. There's no, yeah. I wouldn't say, if you watch one DVD, you basically just be good at one thing. So, mm. you know, it's not like one is better. Or one. Get a variety of instructionals, work your way through. Yeah. Yeah, Slowly post yourself. One at a time. Like what I do actually is I'll watch the whole thing, basically not in one go, but like in two or three parts. So you kind of skim watch it. But I'll watch the whole thing and then I'll watch the sparring at the end. Then I'll see what he's doing most in the sparring. Then I'll go back to that bit in the DVD and see like, okay, this is like the details of what he's actually achieving in the sparring most of the time. Cause like Gordon uh, puts up sparring in his things. Okay. And then, so I'll reverse engineer it from the sparring, see what actually he's using the most. And then I'll focus on that and then like fill in the gaps around it once I start using it in training. That's a sick detail. Yeah. So whole, the whole thing, time. whole thing broken up into three or four pieces. Yeah. Watch the sparring, then go back to specific bits that you like yeah. that he sees in sparring. Yeah. Cause I feel like if you just go, let's say he's doing like a passing instructional yeah. and one of the, and it's like his latest one was like circling around the outside, pushing the knees away from chest and ca camping at the J point. Yeah, you love that. I fucking love that. Anyway, if you, <laughs> like if you just do one bit like a Toriando side to side, like I'm just gonna waste my time because I can already do that. Like you wanna watch the sparring and see what he's doing. Like, okay, this is kind of how it looks. And then you go back and see the section where it's kind of like what he explains, what he's, where he explains the, the real bit of it. Cause, like yeah. A lot of it is filler, basically. A lot yeah, of the yeah. time it will be filler or stuff you've seen before, depending on your level. That's a good point, man. Because sometimes you open those things up and you're like, I just can't watch this right now. And you yeah. need to get caffeined up and you're just like, how watch much? the sparring if you can't watch it. Okay. That's, yeah, that's what I reckon. Sometimes I'm watching, it's like technique and you're just, you're pretty focused and it's going like one mile an hour. Just go and watch the sparring if you want to be somewhat entertained. And yeah. if you're in a position where you feel like you can learn really well, I would say watch the sparring. Uh, nice, watch the sparring. If yeah. you like a point, go back to that point. Yeah, and then you can be spoon-fed info if you're less switched on. That's sick. I mean, look, that, that ties into progress, opportunities, drill, instructionals. Just get on it, people. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Just be friendly. I mean, go to church. Yeah. Twice go, a week. Go to church. Five times a day. All right, Charles, how important are cable machines in the gym? Look, I mean, you can do heaps of shit in the gym, man. C cables are like, <laughs> we, we, we don't have a cable machine. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you don't need a cable machine. Um, I guess, look, what, can you, what, what are some good things you can do on cable machines? You can do some row variations, you can do some core variations, you can do some fly variations. Do you need cables to do that? No, you can do all of those things with dumbbells. Uh, so I would say minimally important because everything that you can achieve with a cable you can also achieve with a band but the issue with the band is it's harder to progressively overload because you're not going to have the exact pins and you can't exactly measure the resistance that you're that you're using so cable machines will be definitely better in that in that uh part of it um but you don't you don't need them i mean re really all you need to be on it to be honest to get super strong in the gym is like barbell some dumbbells uh uh and that's it a bench and a bench and you can get fucking strong and you can create the best program ever. Yeah. The most important thing is just being consistent with your program. You could have, you could write yourself a billion different things to do or each week go to the gym and do a different, a bunch of different stuff and not get anywhere. Is there a reason not to use cables? No, no way. Oh, okay, so it's just- Cables are good. I mean, look, shit, really. yeah, it's the same shit. So say like some of my online guys, I actually haven't programmed any cables into the thing. Maybe some, maybe for some like pal off press as a core exercise. Um, which is nice, but I mean, look, if you, you can do some like cable rows, you can do the exact same thing with a dumbbell. I mean, this is in a, in a, like, okay, so here's one advantage. Say you're doing a single arm row or croc row, which is like on a bench, framing, pulling, that may have a little bit more stress in the lower back. Whereas with the cable, you can just do it standing up in a nice stance, and that's gonna take all the tension off the lower back, no axle loading. So there's one advantage to the cables, yeah. cables over uh, dumbbells. You say you can go more specific with the cables. You could be a little bit more specific, or you could be like, like, say you came into me and you're like, man, my lower back is beat up after, uh, and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's say we go through the deadlifts or whatever. And it's like, okay, let's do some single arm rows. But also I would program out of this, like we could just do a chest supported row, but let's say we have cables available, be like, okay, I still want the single arm component and a bit of yeah. core 
core and rotation work, we can just do a standing cable row, which is actually gonna take the, act the, the loading off the spine, because you're standing and just pulling to the midsection. Yeah. That's a nice advantage. Nice. Uh, another one is pec flies. Pec flies are really nice, especially for jiu-jitsu guys to open up. Where would I I'd program that into like the accessory, the bottom half of the accessory work. Um, also depending on the athlete and how tight they are, but like usually the bottom half of the accessory work to the end of the session. Cable flies are nice. I do them a lot when I'm at the gym, just because I like them. Um, can you do them with dumbbells? Yeah. yeah. So Fair. how important are cables to in, in the gym for jiu-jitsu guys? I mean, it just depends on the program that you're following. I would just say, again, if you have a program, make sure you're just consistent with the program and it's not changing every week. Especially for guys who are just starting in the gym, you can follow the same program, the, the exact same exercises and just progress week to week to week to week and still make gains, gains, gains for like 12 to 16 weeks on the same program and you won't need to deload or, or um, change exercises. The only reason why you'd start changing, changing the exercises is to either create a different stimulus in muscles or if one exercise kind of gets a little bit stale, then you go, okay, cool, let's change, let's keep the same, very, uh, let's ch change that variation of the exercise rather than completely changing the muscle groups that are being worked. Yeah. I.e. a single arm row could turn into a single arm cable row or a chest supported row or a bent over row Sorry. or a landmine row. This is a million, or a ring row or an inverted row. There's many different variations that we can do. Most important thing when you're going to the gym is that you are progressively overloading each week and you can hit to the program. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing. Oh yeah, that was a thorough, <laughs> thorough, thorough explanation. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You asked for it, man. You asked for it. Asked I'll fucking give it to you. I'll fucking give it to you. Cunt. <laughs> All right. One hard session or three technical ones? Uh, Let's I go. would... Mm, What's hard? Yeah. What's, yeah. what's a okay? So what's a hard session for you? Hard session would be just just sparring for an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Or one to two hours, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and a technical one would be, I guess, drilling and flow rolling. Do you flow roll? I, I don't do either. So <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess we're just it's just the one hard session. Shout out George, <laughs> that one. Yeah, one hard session. That's my answer because I don't do either. It's a personal choice. If you like to drill, then drill. If you like uh, sparring, then just spar. I feel like if you have enough sp a variety of sparring partners, you can just pick a white belt. Or if it's not a white belt, you can just pick someone who's much smaller than you and just right, hit your moves. bully the fuck out of them and hit your moves, yeah. yeah. You don't even have to do them right if you're stronger. You can just be stronger. And then you practice that way. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this a lot as well, but I think it's a, it's a nice detail to drive home. Like, if you're... Training with if you're like run constantly thinking about oh, I need to draw this and da 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 and you see people just like in the corner of the room and you're like they're just drilling over and over again. I think I, I always yeah. think they're wasting time, but it's, it's like a false sense of security. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Like oh, like you see it classically in the gym, people like people over yeah. there doing like single leg X transitions yeah. to this and that. But what they'll do as well is they won't train the options. They'll just go like one. They'll thing. just do really hard, really fast, like this one sequence and I'm gonna drill it a thousand times like and be, you know, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. I fear the man that has a thousand kicks. Well, not really though, because if he's just got one kick, you're just like, all right, I'm just gonna defend against that one kick <laughs> and then he's got fuck all left. But if he's got like, you know, three or four different kicks that are all pretty good, now you're kind of fucked. A variety of options to move from. Yeah, so our video that we're gonna, uh, actually, no, we didn't do the options, but we'll get video, to the options. We'll, we'll get to the options over time. You'll see the progression. But basically our video was on, De La Hiva, which you can't say anymore, but basically passing, <laughs> passing De La Hiva with the knee cut. And, and then other options, which we talked about previously, was like a back step and then a leg drag. So yeah, you know, that would be today. better than just saying like, I'm just gonna get really fucking good at like just one knee cut, because sometimes it's not available. So sometimes you've got to be good at, yeah. like, good-ish at a knee cut, good-ish at a leg drag, and good-ish at a uh, Like we did today, step. we, need, we yeah. should do that, we'll do that next week. Yeah. We'll um, this is actually off prompt. I'm going to throw you off guard here. What uh, what does your current training schedule look like? Let's go through that. Let's let's say like when when say your foot's healed, everything's good. What, what is your what's your current what does your current uh, schedule look like? Open mat Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and that basically when I say open mat, it's just rolling. So it might not be open open like any one can. I mean anyone can come, but people don't. Anyway. Like a pro class. So yeah. To speak. And then Wednesday I'll do wrestling training, and sometimes I'll go training before that. Uh, most of the time I've got private, so I don't do that. But yeah, wrestling training. And then Saturday, I teach at my class and I spar with the students there. So it's kind of a rest and kind of not a rest. And Sunday, waits. So again, not really resting. Waits on Thursday too. And waits on Thursday, yeah, as well. 
Okay. And cool. then evening every day is evening classes. And you, you jump in there each time? I jump in, not each time, but like if I feel like I've got anything left in the tank from the day, then I'll just burn myself there. But that's when I get injured in the evening classes. So if you want to injure me, <laughs> come get me in the evenings. Could we uh, maybe cut those evening classes out so you reduce your risk of injury? No, because I need money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, not sparring them. I, I also like practicing in the evening classes. Yeah, though, so, yeah, and I also teach in the evening classes and then, and then I have to prove the move works by doing it on the students in the class. So There's a reason. It's, it's actually helpful, yeah, but I'm just, come evening time, I'm, I'm dehydrated and frail. So, yeah. And also the mats aren't always perfect. Sometimes they're a bit like, you know, yeah. like the curtain mat. I don't know what, like a big tarpaulin is fucking horrible to play guard on, for example. Got it. More likely to injure yourself, that sort of stuff. You keep taking those electrolytes, man. Yeah, yeah, true. That electrolytes twice, do help. Twice a day. But even then, sometimes, like, if you, even if I feel too good in the evening class, I'll overdo it and injure myself. So, if you're in the evening class with Owen, just fucking just, break my leg. Just chill out, man. <laughs> he's gonna beat you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, he's gonna beat you. Yeah. So don't worry. All right. All right. That's you know, the so lesson. Anything you would have changed about your ADCC camp? No, it's over. Oh, I probably yeah. just wouldn't have wrestled at all. I probably just spent the whole time playing, sitting on my ass playing guard, because then. I might have, uh, might have come to Wagner's back or something as well, you know, or... You didn't need the wrestling. Or beaten. Yeah, I didn't use the wrestling. To be fair, I used the wrestling in the first round to, to you know, that was basically the thing that got me to, got me to win was the wrestling in the, the first round. Yeah, yeah, the back take off, off the uh, 100%er. So, yeah, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have changed anything. It was fine. It was a good camp. Yeah, can't say anything went, went badly. I wouldn't have got injured. Uh, I wouldn't have injured myself trying to DDT someone. Three times in a row. Yeah, I know. I, I deleted <laughs> one guy three times in a row. Next round. You and then it. next round. And the, eventually I got... So it's five, five, five to six attempts of DDT. Well, five... Well, yeah, five. multiple. I don't even know. Countless DDTs. And then one of them, the guy sprawled as I was doing it. So my, there was valves of pressure on the knee and it, uh, <laughs> and it popped my pez anterior and my MCL. And this, the is, same. this is in the evening class as well. This is At the, the evening end class. End of the day, dehydrated. The end of the day. Oh, well, no, I felt great. That was the thing. I felt That's why I was DDT in folk, because I was like, damn, I'm feeling, <laughs> feeling damn good. And I was like, damn, for once, here we go. I'm feeling great. And then, uh, yeah, got injured. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. cat. All right, so yeah. What, what question was that? All right, anything I would have changed about the ADC? So that's a number one, not getting injured. Yeah, maybe just take it a bit more seriously, not getting injured, but whatever, it's just... Yeah, I'd do it again. Yeah, and you said you regret nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I regret nothing. You said that at the time. I yeah. regret nothing. And then in ADC, like, yeah. No, that's it, really. That's it. It all went pretty, pretty you, well to you plan. Did, you did your best. Yeah, I did my best. I, I, <laughs> I, shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have done so much wrestling in oh, the like, camp. Come on here a little bit. Sorry, I shouldn't have done so much wrestling in the camp, but I was, I was enjoying the wrestling. Except, except the rounds with Sylvia, but I was enjoying the wrestling for the, for the most part. It was good fun. Why not with Sylvia? Sylvia, hard. some of the rounds are enjoyable. It's fucking hard. They're, they're, yeah, they're very satisfying if you get anything going, but if you get tired and you're sparring with Sylvia, right, it's not, it's not fun. Also, now he's, he's getting wrestling privates off the same guy we're getting wrestling privates off. Oh, yeah. And it's just getting... He's getting swollen. It's getting now. worse. He's getting swollen. And he's getting swollen. Yeah, and he started doing weights with you as well, so... Before it was just kettlebells, and we're like, oh no. Like, now he's got proper training. Now he's got proper weights, and it's getting fucked. Well, yeah, anyway. Let's see what we can do. At least he's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a son, too. He's going to hate it. Arab life. Arab life. life. Seminar tour. Yeah, I'm doing it. It's not like a tour, so all right. I'm getting a driving license. Going on world tour. <laughs> oh, you can't drive? No. Nah. Don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a drive. I'm sure I could drive, right? There's actual like Legal. morons that drive, yeah. So and I can cycle. So I'm gonna start with a moped and then work my way up to a proper car. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. I've uh, just sent off my application, and uh, then I've got to do the what's it called theory, and then I've got to do the, the rest of it. Well, I wish you the best with that. Is it, I wish you the best with that. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to... So what does that have to do with the seminar tour? You're going to drive to seminar? So yeah, yeah. A seminar tour tends to be like, instead of doing like one seminar a week, you do like a seminar every day, you know, or every two days, you go like oh. traveling up the shit parts of the country. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, Stoke. <laughs> Anything out of London is shit. <laughs> of like, of like. That'd be like the majority of our listeners. Fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So yeah, I'll probably need that a driving license happen. to make that worth it. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, do loads, do a seminar every couple of days rather than like do one one week and then I've got to go back home and then go another one week. It's just again, the travel's not efficient. Got to make the travel efficient to actually make it worth it, or else I'm just exhausting just get, yourself just getting paid to travel which is shit yeah i don't want to be a cab driver cool <laughs> great just get yeah get the driver's license wait yeah. so when's the tour when i get my driving <laughs> license oh okay who knows i need to pass the test who knows if i even pass it you know that can take some time by the way it, I take, there's a fucking massive backlog and um, oh is there yeah things. true actually yeah i've heard that actually so anyway i'm sure if you pay money you can do the test and stuff but let's see basically yeah uh, do that at the moment if you want a seminar just shout me and uh yeah give me, give me his dms and i'll come, come offer, through. offer the right money but yeah all, all weekends at the moment so no weekday seminars because i'm uh yeah and all for the right money pay him the right cash yeah he'll go on okay enough enough all right cool Let's more save. crackheads please let's save that to the end yeah we don't want to break too much crackheads now we'll get no, that no, we'll save it for a bit yeah uh yeah, you can okay just tune out if you don't want crackhead Stories. Yeah, exactly. Save it at the end. Cool. Uh, money, no object. What is Owen Train? Where does Owen Train? To be honest, anywhere in the world. Yeah, I mean, it would Antarctica. probably just be with, like John Danaher and that. Like, obviously, with those boys. Yeah, they just keep winning. So you, you, you'd be stupid not to say that. But then, who knows if it's if it's actually a fun training environment or if you're just like a robot in the process. Yeah, if you're just being a robot. I don't know though. If you're, like, I feel like if you actually want to win stuff and you really care about being the best in the world at it and all this kind of stuff. That's where it is. Yeah, I wouldn't say I care about being the best in the world. I care about being good, but not like, I don't have to be the best. <laughs> I'm just like, it's all right. You can sort of, you know, yeah. my ultimate goal isn't to be dominating everyone. It's just, what's the goal? Just, uh, you know, run a gym, pre pretty good. Yeah. Train some savages. That would be the goal, really, to just have a, a full team where if someone comes to visit, they leave, like, what the fuck just happened? Not if they come to visit, they're like, mm, that gym was shit. They had one good guy, but, you know, yeah. I want everyone to be like, Fucking, like fucking destroys. Ah, okay. Weirdo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, got, these guys are freaks. Yeah, these guys are freaks. Where'd you find this guy? In? <laughs> okay, so to, to answer your question, start your own one. Make your place yeah. your. Which is happening? Anyone got two hundred k? Or a studio? Or let's make it happen. Availability, let's, guys. I don't, just keep subscribing to the podcast. Let's get it going so we can yeah, yeah. make some money off this. Yeah, we can make two hundred k off this. Uh, jokes aside, you actually could. But we can make two hundred k. Yeah. Eventually, money. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, money is the. Yeah. So money, no object, start your own. Yeah, start my own or train with Danaher for a bit, see how it is, but I don't want to commit to saying that. Or just you like, could do that now to be fair, no? Yeah, but then you've got to move to Austin and, and like, the thing is that like, I could, if it was just me there, I could sell privates and teach lessons. But the fact that they've got so many people there who can teach, teach lessons and sell privates. Also, you need a driving license, so I still can't do it. Basically, that. there's too many options. Like, why would you get a private off me when you can go to Bodoni? Or, or Marigali, or Danaher, yeah. or yeah. Gordon. The competition's or, fierce. Exactly, the competition is fierce. And then you've got the B team as well, if you want to get, I guess. There's plenty of good Jets guys there, yeah. yeah. But they charge a lot for privates. I was speaking to, what's it called, Damian Anderson, who trains on the B team. He's one of the guys on the B team. He was saying he charges $300 really? for an hour private. Fuck. $300, like. I feel like in the US you can make more, like, like good cash, people just pay it. Yeah. Especially Austin, Austin, it's got so much money coming yeah. into it now. Oil. Oil, but also just rich tech guys. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So if I, yeah, in London you can. It just... would be Texas, obviously, the mecca of Nogi Jiu Jitsu at the moment. But yeah, failing that, it's just start your own thing and just make your students good. I also think that the current training partners I have are pretty good. Like after going to ADCC, you know, I feel like we can. Someone from the UK can win. You could win. I could win. <laughs> I do. I, I definitely think you yeah, could yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, anyone could win on, on, yeah, their, yeah. on their day. It's just how many times out of a hundred could you win? But basically, I didn't. Like, there was nothing that was like overly surprising or, or like, wow, this is a completely new sport. That, you know, it's just yeah. basically everyone's got their attributes, and as long as you have like a good training room, you can you can get fucking good. Also, with DVDs, you've got no excuse. No restrictions. You've no excuses. No excuse. Yeah, just copy Gordon. You should be as good as Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> everyone should be as good as Gordon. Just so, copy him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just copy his DVDs. Easy. Literally. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> major injury from kick no mason injure my leg from kick how's my leg after mason kicked it uh, actually that was funny actually we need to actually, can you put that video up 
Oh yeah, I can post it. So when I went to foot sweep him, his ankle, his came. leg hit into his other leg, and his ankle like it was like a version on the ankle. It collapsed. It looked like he hurt his ankle a little bit. It's like I would have kicked my leg too, if, if if my ankle got twisted like that from some bullshit. I don't know if you want to post. Yeah, I'd let's say post I'd, it. I'd, I'd say post it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. We could. Yeah, we'll do we'll do a reel of. Yeah, let's, we'll let's just, go we'll, again. We'll have that in on there. So what, what happened? Let's tell us what happened. So yeah, I just went for a foot sweep on Mason, trying to do the Gordon thing. Like I wasn't holding back right. And I didn't, if he planted his foot, it would have been a kick, but he didn't plant his foot. He let it slide across and it hit his other leg. And then uh, his other foot like bowed to the outside for a second. It collapsed. I, I don't know well. if he felt that or not, but from the video, it's it, pretty painful. It looks like it had like spring to it as it came back. So I don't think anything popped or else it wouldn't have that spring, but yeah. definitely his muscles tensed up and like pulled his foot back into place. And that's why he kicked you. And then that's why he kicked me. And that's why I haven't been able to walk. Because <laughs> he kicked a long you. Time. He kicked, he kicked me too. And he lost two points. I, point. He lost the negative for that kick, and then he had to, and then he had to push the whole match, and then he had to shoot for a leg. I think his goal with the leg lock was to try and get me to come on top, and then oh. he could sweep me from there easier than he could pass my guard. Got it, got it. Potentially, but and yeah. He went for a leg lock, and you and went, went good night out and, and his foot fell out of between my legs, and then yeah, just just jumped on his leg, crushed him. <laughs> crushed him. I want to say that, but yeah, I got his leg anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's apt. Yeah. And my foot's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Why leg locks? Why? Why uh, do you like leg locks? I just, well, I think I like it all of it, to be honest. It's just most available. Like, I'd rather face choke someone than leg lock them, put it that way. Yeah. But I think it's more, it's easier to leg lock most people because it's you... always there. Like, there's no point, even if you're on someone's back, I'm pretty sure you can get to their leg easier than you can face choke them. Yeah. Most of the time. So it's always there. It's always available. Most people aren't very good at it. People are scared. Yeah. You can get more practice and taps in the gym. Yeah. I guess the taps don't matter if people are just, if people are just shit scared and you're getting taps, it's kind of boring, but. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. trying to get out of it and stuff. Yeah, then it's good fun. And also, I feel like I just started early, so I was like slightly ahead. At uni. Yeah, started. I started, yeah, because as soon as leg locks were becoming a thing, I was like, all right, it's time to get 2017. on that. 2017. Yeah, it's time to get on that as ASAP and get as good as possible, because obviously, Everyone was shit. Also, I kept getting caught in leg locks in competition, so I was like, fuck this, I'm gonna get good now. Yeah, yeah. And then, to be honest, over COVID was probably where my leg locks improved the most. With the trio, the three musketeers, you, Max, Sylvia. Yeah, and even before that, when it was just shed training, uh, oh, I was you had teaching shed, privates, right. yeah, yeah, teaching privates in the shed and having to do lots of specific rounds. And also, like normally, if you're doing specific rounds, you can just sort of like spaz out of stuff. But if, you, if you're uh, teaching, Starts buzzing, people aren't going to come back, so <laughs> you better be super technical. How it works basically, if, if someone's doing it to you or vice versa, and you know, some people learn by copying as well. So, if it was specific rounds and I was trying to teach leg lock defense to someone, it wouldn't be that they're just defending me, my leg locks the whole time. Mm. We might switch, for example, and I do some defending so they can, like, let's say I'm teaching, my teaching isn't that good, but how I roll is good, but their ability to learn is even better. And mm. some people learn better by just copying what you do. So yeah, shout out Jonas Grace on that one. Jonas, yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's just he's very good at copying yeah. moves. I feel like he's like you can explain something to him and it, and he'll get it and be able to drill it perfectly first time. So he can follow instructions very well. But in terms of like feeling the move, he does a better job of copying it if he feels it first. Got it, got yeah. it. So yeah, that's how that's that, how and why leg locks. That's how and why leg locks. How yeah. you learn from? Okay. How do you learn from instructionals? We already covered this at the start of the podcast. Yeah. Sparring, find the bits that you like in sparring, go back, watch the whole thing. And then start on noobs. Yeah, that was part of the question that I didn't put off as well. Like, do you drill? Do you spar? Basically, sp yeah, we've done it before. Just watch it on the podcast. <laughs> There's no point watch. ramming it down your throat again. Yeah, we have, we have, yeah, a time st we have yeah. time stamps on the podcast. We yeah, have yeah. a time stamp. Yeah, we've got time stamps. Click the time stamp button. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I had some questions this week as well. People asking about how to progress uh, in the weight room. Uh, do I should I like how much do I increase the weight by reps, sets, whatever? Like if you, look, if you have a program, there's there's many ways you can apply pro progressive progressive overload to a program. It doesn't just have people like think traditionally. Oh, it just needs to be. I need to go heavier each time. Yeah, that's gonna get you strong. That's not the only way in which you can get strong in a program. Also, if you're progressing week to week to week, uh, some of my guys. One of my guys this week, he's like, oh, each week we'll try and like put like five, 10 kgs on his deadlift. It's like, man, that's, that's a ridiculous amount. 
You need to <laughs> you need to slow it down a little bit. You're gonna get too strong, bro. Because <laughs> <laughs> then three weeks deep. later, he's like, "Oh, it's stalled." It's like, no shit. Like, <laughs> you just need you need to get you, you need to get accustomed to the weight that you're lifting. Small increments over time. Get accustomed to the weight. It's like almost teaching your body that, like, look, each week we're gonna try and go a little bit heavier than last week, so you can be prepared yeah. for that increase. Because if you just try and go like, "Oh, that, that deadlift was easy, man." And just fucking put 10 kgs, 10 kgs, 10 kgs. You have nowhere to go. Yeah, you have nowhere to go to. You need somewhere, like say if you start a, start a training block, you need to start lighter than what would like be your maximum weight. Because then if you just start at your max, where the fuck are you gonna go from there? Yeah. Start at like 70% and then each week be like, look, I'm gonna put either on a big compound lift, 1.5s each side or 2.5s each side. So that's like a three, two to three kg, two, let's say two to five kg increase each week for the upper body movements a little bit less for the lower body movements you could probably get away with five kgs depending um on how you start but other ways you can you can use progressive overload is by adding in more reps to an exercise with perfect technique so let's say you're on the deadlift uh yeah. last week we did x amount for three times five this week we did also did three times five arguably with better technique that's a win yeah. yeah, we focus more on bracing. The, the the reps look better than they did last week. I'll take that win. Yeah? yeah, we could also have added an extra set in there or an extra few reps on the side, and that would have been a higher volume than we did last week as well. I've got a question actually. Give it to me. I just thought. <laughs> I just thought of. So if you come into training tired, and then you do your weights, what like, and you're not getting anywhere close to your max or whatever, are you still working like endurance? Would you say? like muscle endurance. Let's say I come in, I'm fucked, and it's like, okay, we've got to do less weights today. Yeah. Are we still benefiting? Yeah, Or are we time. just working on muscle endurance? Or are you getting any strength gains? Or are you getting size gains? Yeah, that's a good question. So like, let's say you come in and you're exhausted. It's like, okay, what, let's, we're gonna to need to change a few things in the session. Like maybe I had you to deadlift, let's higher than last week. That ain't gonna happen. So, okay, maybe we can add in an extra set or just accept that we're gonna do a little bit less or change the exercise up. So like maybe you had a straight bar deadlift and we go, okay, cool, we're gonna do trap bar deadlift, which is a little bit easier and an edge closer to the same weight that we did last time or a trap bar yeah. or potentially a little bit heavy on a trap bar. Or if we just go, okay, we're gonna do straight bar deadlifts, let's just do it with excellent form, maybe add an extra set in at a lighter weight, therefore we're achieving a little bit more volume. Yeah. And what you, let's say you did like a lighter weight and so more, I guess lighter weight and more volume, you were saying you get more Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy work. Yeah. yeah. Or you just create you just create like the same amount of stimulus stimulus without lifting as heavy weight. So neurologically, you know, okay. you get the same like max like magnitude of stimulus, but you'll get a little bit more volume. So you're still making gains. Also another component of, of looking at it being like, okay, he's fucked. He's not gonna be able to push the same as he did yeah. the, pre the previous session. That's fine. Just take the just you're not necessarily taking a loss on that. Let's just look to lift the bar really well for how you feel right now. So I have a technical like just maintenance basically. Yeah, just exactly. Staying where you are is a win. Exactly. In that scenario, okay, fine. Because at the end of the day, like look, look, a lot of jiu-jitsu guys, they're like, yeah, I need to fucking crush the gym. It's like, bro, are you trying to be a power lifter? Or are you trying to get good at jiu-jitsu? Because yeah. it's like if the goal, if you're if you're doing lots of jiu-jitsu, the goal is just the weight is meant to supplement your jiu-jitsu training. So you coming in and deadlifting let's say 10 to 15, even let, let's say between five to 15% than you did last time, it really doesn't matter. You're still doing, doing a bit of maintenance work. You're not particularly getting that much stronger, but where you, you're getting the weights in, which is gonna help your joints, yeah. help your muscles. You you're still getting stimulus. Muscle, yeah. You're still maintaining muscle. You haven't lost muscle. That's still a massive win. Yeah. And then also as the session goes on, as you know, you may start to pick up the intensity a little bit. You go, okay, the deadlifts are done. I'm starting to get a little bit more energy now. Maybe yeah. you make the, some wins on the accessory stuff. Some of the, yeah, true. Excuse me. Some of the lower risk ex exercises you could actually go heavier on. So say like, yeah, man, yeah, I'm okay. feeling really tired. We're not going to push the deadlift today because the risk, the risk reward is far greater than you getting a win on the dumbbell bench press or a single arm row or even like a, a split yeah, squat. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Risk of injury is lower. So. When tired, essentially the compound moves, you might have to take Alter. a back seat most of the time. And yeah, then, yeah. Take take yeah. take a bit of a back seat. Let's get the technical gains because there's huge wins for technical gains. Because let's say we do fifteen five to fifteen percent lighter, but we make like you find something out. You're like, oh, if yeah, I put my yeah. foot here, I actually lift it better. Cool. So now when you go, but now when you're feeling really good, and you come in for the 
for like you're fired up for a session, you know that, okay, if my foot's here, I can actually lift the weight easier. Yeah. You've made a win going forward. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right, then. And then the win, the wins also come in like maybe the dumbbell bench press, you do a few more reps or a few more sets or the weight's heavier or the split squat, you manage to get a bit yeah. more energy to crush that. Yeah, yeah. which is a huge win, but much less risk of, of injury. Yeah, and if you didn't do the session, you just waste away, essentially. If you didn't do the session, it's like... You slowly start to waste, like lose muscle, basically. Well, it's a habit thing as well. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, well, you missed the session, then how, how many more sessions are you going to miss? Like, it's not the yeah, end of the world, but I would just say, like, I've had clients come in being like, one, one person texts me, being like, man, I can't see you. He was out till four in the morning. He was hungover as fuck. We had a 12 o'clock session. He texts me at nine o'clock. He's like, I'm so hungover. I can't even see right now. I'm like, get your fucking ass to the gym. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he came, he PB'd his, because we're at the end of, a, end, of a, end of a cycle, squat cycle, he made an all-time PB on the squat for f fucking five reps and an all-time PB on his bench he for five reps and he fucking crushed Probably it. hadn't come down yet. Yeah, he, came, <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he crushed the session, so you'd surprise yourself. Still coked up from the night Still before. fucking, get, maybe did the fucking big line of gear before he came in. <laughs> but people surprise themselves. Like you go yeah. out, you go on the night before and like, how many times do you come to the gym and you're like, man, I feel like shit coming in, but then you leave feeling better. Yeah. That's, that's my goal for like, when people come into the gym, be like, look, if I can just get you to leave better than when you walked in, feeling better than when you walked yeah. in, that's a fucking huge win. Yeah. Because remember, the goal, of, the goal of doing strength and conditioning work for jiu-jitsu in, co in co combination with jiu-jitsu is to help supplement your jiu-jitsu training. Yeah. That's it. Unless you want to be power, if you have, if you want to be power lifter. And looking swole. People and looking like swole. Look swole. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. Looking nice good. Looking swole. Looking good. <laughs> Real nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something I've been doing recently. Look, I haven't been doing as much jits because my uh, back injury. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that is going to make a difference to my recovery. On the, on the assault bike. I've been doing a lot of assault bike, like five times a week. Yeah. It's, it's awful. That's but horrible, yeah. This is actually what I want to talk about a little bit as well. People are like, oh, how can I improve my conditioning for jiu-jitsu? I need to do more rowing, more air down and stuff. It's like, dude, that, we've talked, spoken about this before, how to improve your like, like conditioning for yeah. jiu-jitsu specifically. That extra aerobic work will help improve your capacity to work for longer and may improve your capacity to recover faster between rounds. But let's say you come up against like a, like a stud, not even a stud wrestler, someone who's like really good in scrambles, really good at like just getting out of things, stuff that makes you tired or you have to constantly chase them. Mm. The airdyne stuff and the rowing stuff isn't going to necessarily, like, it's not specific enough to help your ability to, to scramble and chase things yeah. and, and really get after things. It gets a lot of te technique and knowing when to pace yourself and managing your intensity in the match. However, being really aerobically fit is going to help your ability to recover faster between those scrambles. Yeah. But it's not specifically gonna help you scramble for longer and like try and chase things. That's a very specific kind of Would you say it's more risky to train that doing jujitsu than it is on like, let's say whatever the, I don't know what the red zone and the green, whatever, all these heart rate zones, but sure. basically it's more risky to train your cardio doing jujitsu. Like if you're going, if you're trying to train your cardio in rounds, you're basically trying as hard as you can and you, you're doing yeah. stuff that's not controlled, like. yeah. That, that, more of, co of, co of course, that's way more risky, yeah. Way, so, yeah. way more risky. But then it's like pacing yourself as well. Like understanding, you've said this yourself, understanding really good technique, knowing when to push, knowing when to pace yourself. So like I would say for, for people to have like a really good aerobic base, I don't even know what your aerobic base would look like. Like if I put you on a bike for like 20 minutes, what pace you'd be able to maintain? What did you be able to maintain? Do you know what I mean? Terrible. It it probably wouldn't be amazing. <laughs> Mine would be better than yours, yeah. I guarantee. You. No doubt about for sure. that. Buddy. For oh sure. my god, yeah. What well, I went on the uh, what's that thing called? The burst climb. That's awful. Right. Yeah. That is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. I used life. to do like thirty minute pieces on that. I have. I literally did three minutes and I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Because you're not conditioned to that. Me. But it's like you're conditioning for jujitsu because of like your good technique, knowing where to put yourself, knowing how to pace yourself. That's what gets you through. That was the most tired I've ever been. In your life? Yeah, I, I, was, I felt like I had COVID on <laughs> My lungs, I was just sitting there coughing for like five. It was like mid-COVID crisis as well. And I was just coughing like... Did like, you go as hard as you could for three minutes? Yeah, basically, yeah. I, like, <laughs> so I went to shoot fighters and I was always showing up late. Yeah, so I missed, I missed, the, I missed the warm-up. And I was like, oh, like, what's 
trust this machine. Like people, I always see people <laughs> on the machine, but, and it looks all right. <laughs> and, and then, and then I just step onto the Versa climber, like and it's just sort of nodding at people, and everyone's like, ooh, ooh like ooh, jump on the Versa climber, okay, big man. And, and then uh, you just went for it for three minutes. No, and then and then Alexis comes over and he's like, oh, I will just set you three minutes on the Versa climber, like, and, and he just started setting up on the machine and like pushing all these buttons, and then I get, get, have to get going, and it's and then. You know, it starts off like, okay, I'm trying pretty hard. And he's like, harder, faster. And I realized what he meant. Like, you have to go, cons there's no braking. It has to be constant, like. Versa climber is, is, is the worst because there's no brake. You, you, yeah. you just, you're stuck. Yeah, he was literally shouting at me, like. Was everyone crowded <laughs> around? Who's slapping him on the ass? I'm slapping yeah. him on the ass. No, no one's slapping me on the ass, bro. Oh. This, is, this is broke back climbing, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, he's making it anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was just Alexis being <laughs> like, you're 25, if you're gonna have a heart attack, fucking have it now. And like, <laughs> like, I react well to people shouting at me. It makes me try harder, but I don't enjoy it. And then I was like, damn, like my lungs are so fucked. I probably should do that every day or else I'm gonna, at did some you? point I'm gonna have to climb a ladder. I did it two days in a row. <laughs> at some point I'm gonna have to climb a ladder and I'm just gonna fucking die. <laughs> So yeah, I'm never doing that again. The, to that. the toxic environment at Shoot Fighters. Yeah, I fucking love I it. I love yeah. it, man. Great. If only, I, if I was, only there was more jits and less staff, I'd fucking go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Showers, man. Yeah. Battle soap. Yeah. Shout out to Frank's battle soap. Shout out to Frank's battle soap. <laughs> we haven't had a shout out, but since then I haven't got staff. He's been sponsoring me for... Uh, Four months. Ish. Four months, yeah, and I haven't got staff once. Shout out, that's huge. That's, that's actually amazing. that actually makes a big yeah. difference. Yeah, and if you get some, Frank, yeah. you need to hit me up. Yeah, Frank. Honestly, I'll send him a message after this. <laughs> yeah, the, he watches it. Does he watch it? No, no, no. Frank, fucking send me some. Um, <laughs> Come on, lad. Yeah, the versus climb is tough as fuck. So I guess to get back to that conditioning point. Like, yeah, you you're gonna improve your overall aerobic base, which is gonna help your recovery between rounds in jiu jitsu. So like having a good like being really fit is gonna help your like no conditioning doubt, yeah. at jiu-jitsu, no doubt. And but you'll probably get injured less. Yeah, because you've got better work capacity. Yeah. You're not going to be tired you're making not, silly you're decisions. Make dumb, dumb brain mistakes. You just need to make sure it fits into your schedule of fatigueness throughout the week. So it's like, what I, what I mean by when I have these guys come in, Leon Wesley, Owen Jones, I mean, uh, uh, you, whoever, Rog, whatever. Like, I'm not going to spend my time doing conditioning work with them. They're already pretty well conditioned for jiu-jitsu. Mm. They're coming to me to do weights to get stronger, which overall is going to help their work capacity to yeah. perform better. Have yeah, you, yeah. Like, since you've gotten way stronger, yeah, have, has I that noticed that I can just do more jiu-jitsu moves in a row. Like, let's say I'm trying to underhook and pull a leg towards me. If you don't do weights, you've got about two or three of those in you, or you have to use more perfect technique and you can't rush as much. Mm. If you're strong, you can just easy yeah you can just do that a couple times over and yeah recovery between little like, let's say most of the time jiu-jitsu you do something you get a position you do something you get more position you do something you get sub like that little period in between you recover quicker if you do weights mm. and it helps so you got more energy to actually crush faces and grip, legs. grip too holding holding heavy things yeah. supersetting heavy things in the gym supersets are huge like it's gonna improve your grip strength mm. just holding heavy shit for a long period of time over and over and over and over you yeah. do that year and year and year on end like when I was doing like walking lunges and shit with like 40s and 50 kgs, yeah, no hands. doubt that is going to oh improve your fucking grip strength. No doubt. Bruh. Yeah, yeah that's well, tough. That's all our questions. Let's go. Should have put the question box up earlier. That's For fine. me anyway. This is a 40, we got like 45 minutes of pod. That's I good. Think. Yeah. Crackheads, any interesting tales? To, to People love the crackhead section, man. Yeah, no, but I went off it since I went to America because it's, it's just the whole... It's overwhelming. It's too many people, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have enough storage on my iCloud. And I pay, I pay enough for that iCloud. But yeah, it would have just been pissing in the wind, so I didn't even know. <laughs> and yeah, like nowadays as well, I'm cycling, I'm cycling as much as possible to try and avoid taking a tick in the tube. So... Uh, I'd like, say range. You love cycling in the rain. In the rain, yeah, yeah, yeah. So rain clothing. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Basically, yeah, I just don't take the tube as much, and like when I see them now, also don't want to just pose the same shit again. Like, I don't get me wrong, the crackers have passed in front of me, and they've been asking for money or whatever, but I don't just want to post the same crackers over and over again. It needs to be some, something excep exceptional, you know. That's Actually, it. we went to Liverpool yesterday, and uh, yeah, but it's not even. I feel like most of them are sober, but but you wouldn't know it. On a, on a Saturday night in Liverpool. Normal civilians? 
Yeah, yeah. Crazy. N- normal civilians, yeah, in Liverpool. Just nutcases. Yeah, just gases, I guess. It's different. They should have yeah. their own country. Do you think so? They yeah, should just yeah. disband from there. I think they, they, they want their own country. Do they? They're nothing like people from London. They're their own people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out. Great. Shout out to fucking scouts. <laughs> Men don't talk. <laughs> Men don't talk. All right. And they don't. <laughs> All right. Ways to support the pod. Ways to support. Well, we haven't got any support yet. But I mean, look, like, subscribe yeah. to us on Instagram. Charles and Bryce on a Flanagan on yeah. Instagram. Like and subscribe to the pod on Spotify or any sp- uh podcasting yeah. platform rate the podcast uh like and subscribe on youtube please buy my dvd yeah of course new buy dvd it. coming soon oh what are you gonna do uh i think they want leg locks again i think i wanted to do a half butterfly one but it's probably i in the email they said leg locks so i guess i guess we're doing leg locks <laughs> <laughs> yep all right then get on, his, get, the his, his, get on his uh instructional man yeah, are you gonna yeah. put sparring at the end that's a good idea could do some sparring, but then I have to actually win the rounds, <laughs> which <laughs> might be an issue, you know. You can do that. Yeah, who knows? I'll bring, bring a little white belt. Do it on Christian. Christian, how am I supposed to win the rounds? I'll fuck you up. I'll <laughs> fuck you up. Anyway, good podcast so far. Yeah, yeah, good so far. If we say so ourselves. Great to see you. Guys, see you next week.